Hi guys, it's been a while since I posted a, a video on YouTube. I thought I'd make this quick video today. Um, you might notice I'm in a different location. I've actually built this little uh, room out the back of my house to house my machines. It's a little bit tight, but it's better than having it in the garage, in the, in the road, you know, the cars in the way and all that sort of stuff. So I've got my lathe in here. <clears throat> got a new addition, and it's a little CNC lathe called a Rhino. And uh, stay tuned, that will be coming up online probably within the next couple of months, I'll get it up and running. Anyway, the reason I'm posting this video today is because my belt upgrade kit has arrived for my Titan milling machine. Uh, special thanks from Stuart, uh, Stuart at Titan Machinery uh, up on the Central Coast in New South Wales. He actually contacted the factory and had these made for a couple of us, which was really uh, good of him. It's uh, quite a good little kit. It's everything comes. You can see it comes with a belt, uh, pulleys, this new shaft, this hollow shaft that drives the, uh, allows the quill to be driven still and everything. Um, there's the magnets for the inductors sensor here, the pickup sensor. Uh, oopsie days. You get a new digital readout and a little transformer. Now. I think the only couple of little things I've noticed that are missing from the kit are grub screws for the pulleys that goes in there. Uh, there's no keys, so maybe they assume that you use your old ones. I don't know. Alrighty. Okay, I've stripped the head down on the milling machine. I've removed all the gears. Um, as you can see, the reason they give you that other tube is so you can take this one out and it now becomes, uh, you know, useless, you don't need it anymore. And the, the tube went in its place and uh, look I'll come over here and I'll show you. Everything went together okay on the mill. I had to take off the front cover. I removed all the gears out of there. Now there is only a bit of a problem with the kit. The kit was actually designed, the, as you can see this is a TM20. Um, the kit was actually designed to fit a TM25. So there's a few parts in here that just don't fit my head. So I'm going to have to make some of these parts myself. Um, what was missing from the kit, which Stuart um, informed me, there's a plate that goes under this motor here. And because that plate's missing, I had to pack it up with some nuts. I've been in contact with Stuart. He's been uh, getting in contact with the factory, and no doubt he'll, you know, he'll look after me and he'll get me another one of those plates. Uh, in the meantime, guys, yeah, I might start making some of my own parts. So um, I might even add that to this video as well. Uh, look, it's very quiet. I'll turn it on and show you just while I've got it here now. Uh, you've got to remember this isn't working, the RPM meter, because I need to install the new one. Uh, the magnetic inductance is in here. You can't see it, I'm sorry. Actually, I might just get a torch. Hang on a sec. Yeah, you can see it in there, guys, those little magnets. Alrighty, I'll turn him on. Have a listen. Sorry, it's a bit dark in here. That's a lot quieter than it used to be. It's, uh, yeah, very happy, guys. Okay, stay tuned.
Well, I just finished uh, machining my parts to install the, uh, the belt upgrade kit. This will become my motor base plate. I'm quite happy with the way it turned out. It's uh, just 606 one aluminium, 12.7mm uh, thick. And these little strips here is what will bolt onto the top. I'm very happy they uh, came out really well. As you know, I'm still using um, VCarve Pro. I haven't moved on to any other milling software yet. I've um, at work. We have a spree can, but um, I can't use that at home. It's an educational version. So, we might try and bolt it on now. I've still got to um, drill and tap some holes here, but we'll see how we go. Well, I've just finished. The belt drive is fully converted now. Quite happy with it. You can see I've made these extra plates here. Made a motor base plate as well. Uh, elongated the slot, so I've got heaps of belt tension and plenty of room to get this belt off. I will have to modify this a bit later. What I'll do, I'll make a new set of these. I'll give these to my mate Tony and I'll put a 3D tool path in here and make a curve around here with a ball nose cutter as well. I've replaced the RPM meter. I'll put the transducer in here. I had to make a bracket for it as well. I'll turn it on. It's running really smooth. Very happy with it. Getting uh, nearly 4000 RPM now. You can see the red uh, readout's gone and now it has this blue LED backlight. I think it looks quite well, quite neat. Okay, that's about, that's on the high speed, so it's halfway 1740. And crank right up. So we're getting about 38, 3800. So, yeah, it's really good. I've also, guys, put on the limit switches the other day. So I've been running this mill for a long time without limit switches on. So what I did, I just ran, uh, you know, just these three limit switches, but I set up as homing switches and then run soft limits in Mark III. There's one there, one on the X-tail. I have got the other ones on, but I just haven't got them hooked up yet. And the two under here as well. I don't know if you can see that. So what I'll do, I'll turn the machine on and home it. It's my little control panel down here. into Mark III, and what I'll do here is reset the e-stop, and if I reference all home here, you can see the mouse there, what it's doing, it goes, it will jog the Z up first, you can see the jog, uh, see the Z jogging up now, it will trip the limit switch. I had to uh, set up a debounce function as well because these switches were a little bit noisy and I couldn't get it to work, That's you do that in config. Now when it goes back and homes, it will actually reset the machine to zero as well on the dash of Mark III. And there you go, they're all home. And just to confirm that, there's three green lights up and all zero, zero. So I turn off machine coordinates. I bring it to the actual G54 offset. We'll come back to the center. I don't run my mill that fast. I only run it flat out speed as 500 millimeters per minute. Look, I could uh, you know, get a lot more out of that, but thought, look, I'm never going to be machining that fast anyway. So I was a little bit slow, but it does mean. And there we go, and there's the G54 that I set up. Alrighty. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and uh, yep, I'll try and get that CNC laid up and running soon.